Mr. Hatzel Wexler. I'm not sure what I want to say, uh, but I, I think I should say well, why I'm here. Because, you know, graffiti was 35 years ago, and um, most of the details of the making of the film uh, have sort of lost my mind, I'm not in my memory per se, and I've sort of been reminded um, today, and, and actually um, a couple of weeks ago when um, uh, I saw Candy and I shot some stuff in a little documentary that um, I'm making. And when we went to Bob's Big Boy where all the cars um, gathered together and she went around and asked them uh, about graffiti. Because I was thinking about uh, when I heard that there was 35th anniversary of graffiti, uh, I thought I'd like to sort of um, send a letter to George because why the primary reason why I appreciate the invitation to come here is because of um, my affection for George uh, or my affection for George and this is his hometown and uh, I was so pleased to hear Wendy um, speak of me and my friendship to George and um, through that, I wanted to make this little documentary as a gift to present to George. So anyway, so during that time, I began to realize that the graffiti and the ideas and the, the cultish nature, the sustaining nature of uh, the film itself and also the memory of the um, of the community and what was in the air at the time lasted so long and with such um, passion and, and intensity. And um, when I started to learn about that and feel about it and think about it, uh, I say this is quite an, an unusual wedding of, um, of drama, of theater, of, uh, of a story that came basically out of George's background, although other people physically wrote the story, um, and then have the, uh, the ideas and the presentations live as long as it has. We heard, you know, Jim Winfield here and, and, uh, and other people who I could have to meet with, and, and, and Candy Clark herself, you know. Um, I saw Harrison Ford, I work out in the gym in LA, and Harrison Ford uh, just finished Indiana Jones. And, um, and uh, it was his last, they finished the film, and, and he said he wasn't coming back to the gym that I was in, and so he, um, he, he said a few words about graffiti, so that apparently it was a, and of course in Candy, who's been incredible, and, I, and, and Ron Howard is a friend of mine, and I've shot, um, I shot uh, Richard Dreyfus. you know. I remember during the graffiti when I was hand-holding and shot in the car and so forth, and Richard Dreyfus and a number of his scenes seemed to me to be overacting. And he remembered um, when I was shooting a picture called The Silver City that he acted in, he said, you remember you told me I'm overacting and I'm a, and I'm a ham and so forth. And yeah, but he said it affectionately. So, um, I really don't know what to say about the film. To say about how the film was made, actually the, the technical aspects was all shot in 35 millimeter. No one knew what we're shooting at the time of shooting. You know, nowadays, uh, even if you're shooting films, there's 
video assist, and there's um, people who sit around and um, and look at that image. And um, it used to be that in making films, um, there was we were in charge of making magic, of uh, doing you know mystery. Um, we would um, we would wait until we said see daylights. And um, then, then we would see the film. So that um, it was, it was sort of when, when we had video assist, and now when they when we're shooting um, digital, um, everybody has their finger in the pie, and also with the ability to alter things um, in, in, in post or even on the spot. Um, I hope it's not a, uh, a chauvinistic remark, but the producer's wife sitting looking at the big monitor can say, do you really like that red dress that Anne Margaret's wearing? And, and uh, then the word will go back, the word will go back to the director of photography who's actually standing in front of this monitor because the camera is half a block away. Um, they will then talk to the, the colorists on the spot, and if they can alter or change the frame on the last, you know, or else um, in previous times, first no one would see that thing, and uh, if they did see it in the dailies, they would have the wardrobe changed and change the scene. But in other words, what I'm saying is that the, the way films are made now, the way graffiti was made, is um, is very different. Um, I think I'll just leave what's developing in my mind as I speak for um, for conversation with you later for questions because it's been a long time now. And I would like to hear. Um, I'd like to hear. What's her name? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I remember. She had a scene in graffiti, tell my memory. I don't know if I ever told you about that, but she's in the car. I haven't seen the film for a long since it's out, I think. She's in the car in the front seat, and, I, and I'm in the back seat shooting, and I remember telling you to put your bare leg up in the air. <laughs> and, she, and she picked up her head, film lying on, on the front seat to give me a look about whether some lecherous old man was, <laughs> was suggesting something. But, yeah.